Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome or welcome back to The Everlasting Project, the podcast where we explore what it means to fully embrace and show up as your ideal self. I'm your host, Merlina Azul, and I'm here to guide you as you learn to reclaim your power, step into that main character energy through identity-based work. In today's episode, we're exploring how the anxieties that we see on the surface can sometimes reveal deeper insecurities and limiting beliefs. And I decided on this episode topic after a conversation with my very good friend about this anxiety of somebody breaking into her apartment. And as somebody with a background in psychology and a passion for psychology, I love exploring inner challenges. Conversations with my friends often turn into deeper reflections of ourselves and our personal growth. So when she mentioned these anxieties about somebody breaking in, particularly when she was home alone, I couldn't help but wonder if there was more to it than just like physical intrusion. So I asked her, I was like, is this really about somebody breaking in or is there a deeper fear at play? Maybe a fear of being incapable of protecting yourself or just not feeling safe or competent when you're alone, just not trusting yourself. And this was kind of a moment of realization and inspiration. And it's the reason that I decided to talk about it on today's episode. And we're not only going to get into what is kind of beneath the fear and anxiety, but also how to do some self-exploration to uncover those deeper insecurities and limiting beliefs. Personally, I've been on this journey of inner work and self-development for over a decade now, and I'm still uncovering new limiting beliefs and insecurities. And over the years, I've learned that as we grow and evolve, new limiting beliefs show up with new experiences and new levels of our lives. But with the right tools and some practice and some time, it becomes easier and easier to recognize the patterns and overcome these fears, anxieties, and insecurities. And I'm here to make the journey easier for you by providing you with these tools. So in the show note, I'm going to link a few things. One is going to be the free mini course and the second is going to be the 12-week intensive, both of which are designed to guide you through some self-exploration and give you the tools and resources to help you identify those underlying insecurities and limiting beliefs. We also delve into other topics of personal growth, including relationships, goal setting, habit tracking, core values, and so much more. So if you're ready for a deep dive, definitely go check those out. But today I'll be walking you through practical methods and insights right here on the podcast. So let's dive right in. So first, let's chat for a minute about why it's so crucial to uncover these deeper layers. Because oftentimes what we see on the surface is really just the tip of the iceberg. And underneath, there's this huge mountain of insecurities, limiting beliefs, fears, anxieties that hold us back and affect pretty much every area of our lives. These beliefs can stem from past experiences, societal conditioning, patterns that we've learned from our parents, so generational patterns, things we've picked up over the years from peers and social media, and they shape how we perceive not only ourselves, but also the world around us. And by uncovering and understanding these deeper layers, we can not only gain some clarity, but also gain the ability to make more conscious choices that align with our values and our desires. So if you've watched my content before, you already know that these limiting beliefs can affect every area of your life. They can affect your thoughts, your emotions, your behavior, especially when you're unaware of them. Once you bring them to the surface, it is much easier to sort of reframe and change them. You have a little bit more power over them because you know they're there and you know what to work on. But if you let them sit there below the surface without acknowledging them, they're just in your subconscious mind and they're exerting influence over, again, like I said, every area of your life, your thoughts, your actions, without you even realizing it. So in other words, recognition is the first step, which begs the question, how do we do that? So there are several methods you can use for self-reflection. If you guys have been following me for a while, you already know that journaling is one of my favorites. I turn to my journal for everything. If I've had a good day, if I've had a bad day, if I need to reflect on something, if I need to get something off my chest, journaling and writing things down gives you an outlet, a way to express yourself and a way to process your thoughts and emotions in more depth. We have research showing that journaling can help you process more complex emotions. And I've seen this firsthand. I mean, there are so many things that I've uncovered 
about myself with just a five minute free write. So many breakthroughs that have come from just sitting down and taking the time to write in my journal. And by the way, I did get a question the other day about how to journal. I feel like some people think that it's this rigid thing with rules, you have to do it a certain way, but journaling can really be whatever you need it to be. It's kind of like a diary. The main thing is to just sit down with your thoughts and your feelings and let them flow onto the page without judgment, without worry. Whether you just write down a single word, whether you make a little drawing, whether you fill three pages of paragraph after paragraph, it is all valid. As long as you create a space where you feel comfortable honestly expressing yourself, that's all there is to it. There are no rules. It's just about putting pen to paper and experiencing that self-discovery and that clarity. Another strategy for self-discovery is meditation. I have a whole other episode on meditation if you haven't listened to it already. That is a perfect one for you, especially if you are new to meditation and don't really know where to start. But generally speaking, meditation is an amazing tool to help you cultivate mindfulness and self-awareness, which of course are key in identifying those limiting beliefs and insecurities. If you're not mindful of your thoughts and your emotions throughout the day, it becomes much more likely, like I said before, that your subconscious controls your reactions and your decisions without you even realizing it. And that self-awareness can make it much easier to recognize triggers and patterns as they show up. And that way you can start to consciously shape your responses and reactions and meditation can help you do that by providing a space for you to practice being present. And there are other ways to practice mindfulness as well. Meditation is not the only way. You can incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine just by pausing for a moment and paying attention to your thoughts. And this is something else we go over in both the mini course and the 12 week intensive, by the way. Now, another strategy is artistic expression. So art can mean different things to different people, but it's really about what it means to you. How can you express yourself in physical form? Is that through dance? through visual art, like drawing, painting, through music. Creativity often taps into the subconscious mind and can help you not only reveal what's beneath the surface, but it can also help with emotional release. So in other words, it's not just a way to explore your subconscious, but it can actually help you transmute some of those fears and anxieties into positive and constructive expression. And the last strategy is actually going back to something I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, that is having meaningful conversations with other people, people who you trust. So I shared with you about having that conversation with my friend, revealing that deeper layer of insecurity. And I always say, deep down, you know exactly what's best for you, right? This is not about seeking validation from other people. But sometimes when we're still learning about ourselves and discovering ourselves, it can be helpful to have somebody else kind of shine a light on your blind spots. And just getting that external perspective can be really helpful. So talk to somebody you trust, whether that's a friend, a family member, a loved one, a therapist, whoever you need to talk to. Too, it can be really helpful to have somebody to just bounce ideas off. And that's kind of your starting point, okay? These are just some techniques for self-discovery, but there is so much more left to do. Because yes, self-reflection can bring a lot of clarity, but it's about what you do with those insights that really makes a difference and really drives that personal growth and transformation. So after you do that self-discovery work, whether it's through journaling, meditation, talking to a friend, however you choose to do it, you want to take some time to review what you discovered, right? Think about it, sit with it. And when you're doing this, it can be really challenging, especially at first, because you may not know exactly what to look for and how to apply it. And I'll give you an analogy. This is something I've struggled with pretty much since I've started creating content. It is analytics. Like when I look at my social media analytics, I see the numbers, I see the little graphs, and I'm like, okay, but how do I apply this to future content? What do I do with this information and how do I use it to improve my content in the future? And just like with analytics, when it comes to personal growth and transformation, something important to look for is patterns. So the same way you can't look at analytics from a single piece of content and expect to have enough information to improve on your future content, you can't just do a single meditation session, one single journal entry and expect to have all the answers. You just can't. That's why I always say it's really important to check in with yourself frequently, whether it's weekly or monthly. Some of you may already have my self audit journal and habit tracking journal. 
If you don't, you can get it on my stand store. It's only 10 bucks and it's gonna help you sort of do that weekly reflection and kind of look at the analytics of your life. So you can pick up on these patterns and your emotions, your thoughts, your actions, and maybe even uncover specific triggers that lead to these emotions and actions and reactions. And recognizing these patterns is a really important part of understanding how your subconscious beliefs that are coming to the surface are actually influencing your everyday life. So for example, if you journal and you discover that you feel very inadequate when you receive constructive criticism at work, you might recognize a pattern of self-doubt that's triggered by external feedback. And this can lead to even deeper understanding, you know, why are you experiencing that self-doubt? Why do you feel inadequate? What is causing you to feel that? And once you've uncovered those patterns and those limiting beliefs, you want to start to challenge them. Like I said earlier, it's not just about uncovering what's underneath, but also doing doing something with it and doing something about it. Now, the first thing I love to do when I'm challenging a limiting belief is to ask myself, is this fact or feeling? Is this belief based on factual evidence? And the answer is usually no. I have a whole episode on limiting beliefs, but this is really important stuff. So we're gonna go over it again. And like I was saying, a lot of the times these beliefs are not based on factual evidence, which means that you have the power to reframe them and change them. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you discover a limiting belief that you are not good enough and you often find yourself thinking i'm not good enough i'm not worthy and at first based on past experiences or shortcomings you may convince yourself that yes this is a fact i am simply not good enough period but the example i always give is that even if you have quote failed unquote at being a business owner 30 times in the past that doesn't mean that you're gonna fail again your shortcomings or your past failures are not proof that you're not good enough they're just not because maybe each failure came with a lesson that has fully equipped you to succeed the next time around the next time you try so i encourage you not to use your past experiences as factual evidence of your beliefs the past just doesn't really tell you anything about what could happen in the future especially if you're taking different action especially if you're doing things differently so now that you've gotten to this point and you've realized okay this is just a feeling there's no factual evidence to back up this belief you want to challenge the belief by doing a couple of things first you can reflect on positive experiences so feedback from other people your achievements, your strengths. And thinking about these positive moments and this feedback can really kind of help you cultivate this more balanced and empowering perspective of yourself. And once you have this new perspective, you can start to turn this belief into an empowering affirmation. And this can be as simple as turning it into its positive opposite. That's always the first step. So you just want to negate the belief. I'm not good enough becomes I am good enough. But you can also take it a step further further and turn it into something even more empowering. So for example, I am worthy and capable of achieving anything I put my mind to because I take steps to better myself every day. And by repeating this new affirmation to yourself often and actually following through with it, so taking the action that you said you would take, you're actively reprogramming your mind to focus on your strengths and your potential rather than these limiting beliefs and the limitations that have been holding you back. And over time, those new beliefs override those old negative paradigms. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys, there is so much more that we can cover on this topic. So I think I'm gonna follow up with a part two next week where we talk about self compassion when it comes to uncovering this stuff because this work is definitely not comfortable it is not always easy so treating yourself with kindness and understanding is a very important part of it so if you're not already subscribed make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go so you don't miss out on that episode and other upcoming ones if you want to connect with me on social media my handle is at the marlena azul across platforms and that's where you'll find more tips insights behind the scenes q a's you name it as always if you found today's episode valuable please please be sure to rate it five stars. Your feedback helps me reach more beautiful souls like yourself who are also on their journey of personal growth. I will see you next week for another episode. And until then, I wish you the very best in health and happiness. Bye.